This program is brought to you by the partners and friends of Creflo Dollar Ministries. Coming up next on Changing Your World. Think on this word day and night. Meditate in this word day and night. Replace that thought with something else. Instead of going to bed worrying about this or that or this or that, purposely pick you some scriptures to go to sleep on. Amen. Choose some scriptures to go to bed with and choose some scriptures to wake up with. Amen. And then you go to bed with him at night and you rise up early in the morning. Yes. That's how you do it day and night. Celebrate the holidays with Arrow Records Christmas in the City Part 2 CD. Christmas in the City will carry you through the holiday parties, the family gatherings, and when you just need some downtime this holiday season. Fill every day of Christmas with songs from favorite artists like Canton Jones and World Changers' very own jazz saxophonist Jeff Sparks and more. Christmas in the City Part 2. Bring it home now for the holiday price of $10. Call or go online to order. Number two, second symptom of depression, a passive mind, a passive mind. In other words, matters of life are unimportant. Just, uh, we used to call it the I don't care attitude. Matters of life, just not important. You're, it's not important to you. So in, instead of thinking progressively or aggressively, instead of desiring to learn and to do more, you don't care enough about anything to reach out, you have that I don't care attitude. You could care less if the sun rose or, or if the moon came out or if the kitchen got cleaned up or not or, you know, if, if rats ran all over your bed, I don't care. Uh, now to have a good and a healthy mind you got to tell your, your mind what to think. You have to, I love what the scripture says, soul bless the Lord. You, you have to do that sometimes. And especially when you're going through depression, you got you to speak to yourself in psalms and, and spiritual psalms. If you don't renew your mind, then it's going to be a wild mind capable of thinking anything you want to think. And with the help of the internet and all of the technology you have, you can not only think it, but you can download vi visual pictures and videos and create this world that is creating you and making you the less than the person God wanted you to be. So a passive mind is a symptom of depression. When I, well, when I used to sit down in places and, and have to determine whether or not a person was going through this, these were, these, these were the questions. The questions were designed to ask about these things so that I can get the information I need so I can begin to set up a, um, a medical plan to attack it. And, and most people had no idea. They just thought, well, that's just how I am. No, nobody's just like that. When people tell you, oh, that's just how I am. No, you're not just like that. You're just making an excuse for ignoring the reasons why you are that way. And so uh, a guy who beats up women, it, there's a reason for that. There's a, there's a very, very real reason for why you, you, you would beat a woman up and, and why you would continue to do it and why you are dangerous because you don't even know why you're doing what you do. These are real things. These are things that I've chosen to, to teach on these next couple of months because you need to understand the realities that a person who cannot control his emotions is going to be out of control and try to control other people. Here's the third symptom of, of depression. It's when you amplify or magnify difficulties. A person who magnifies a difficulty or he turns a condition into a problem. I mean, there's an there's a issue there, but it's not a big thing. A guy who's going through depression will take that little thing and make it like it's the biggest thing ever. And you're like, you're looking like, okay, it's, it's fine. And I mean, they'll, 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 they'll amplify it to a point where they'll be in tears and crying over it. And you're like, really? Calm down. 
Yeah, but they just should have put the top on the toothpaste and it's just, whoa. You follow what I'm saying? Um, if it is a molehill, this person will make it into a mountain. Uh, let's say, for example, a husband turns to his wife and, and um, he looks at his wife and, and he doesn't smile at her. And she just, because she's depressed, she says, you know, oh my God, you're mad at me. Why would you say that? Because you turned while we were in the movies, looked at me, you didn't smile, and, and, and I've got, are, are y'all understand what I'm saying? And, and that may freak you out, but it's to let you know that there are these thoughts that have been weighing heavy upon that person. It's so internalized that it's causing them to feel a certain way and display these particular symptoms. What I'm trying to do is to remove the phoniness away from your religion and allow you to see reality of what's going on with you and to know that Jesus has redeemed you from this and to take what we said at the beginning of this teaching, use it and find yourself free from it. But uh, a lot of times Christians don't want to do that. Immediately somebody will turn what you're going through the devil. Well, that's the devil you demon possess. No, that's you taking a thought and and, 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 and keeping it, nourishing it, and, and, and building it up, and now it's determining how you feel. And so somebody said, well, what's the devil? Well, he was probably somewhere out there when you were exposing yourself to stuff and creating the circumstances and the situations, and, and he done, because everything else is, is, is left up to you. Uh, you expose yourself to it, now you start thinking it, can't let it go, and it starts how you feel. He already know. He knows the anatomy of life. And if you're going to find him anywhere, he's out here. Have you, you see this uh, commercial where the little insurance guy, he's, he walks around, he calls himself the mayhem. That's, that's him. That's him. He's, he's mayhem. And he's out there trying to do the mayhem. And, and what, what, what I need you to understand is regardless of what happens, your reaction is what's going to determine your emotional response. So if you decide this is mayhem, but I'm not going to react to it negatively, then you won't get a negative emotion. But if you have situations that happen and you react to it negatively, knowing you have the right to decide how you're going to act to it, then if you react negatively, you're going to have a negative emotional response that comes from, from how you react. That's how that works. That's how that works. And I just want you to know how stuff works. Yes, there are lots of scriptures you can apply to everything that I'm saying. But I need to, before Jesus come back, let you know that there's an anatomy in how things work, and it's just not so simplified as that's the devil and that's God. Especially when God has made you free moral agents and given you the authority to master life, and you're being mastered by life. Thank you. Where's the jerk at on that one? Mm, thank you. <laughs> Amen. There's some people who are so religious when wisdom is being released, and right now I'm trying to explain wisdom to people. You know, some people get offended because I don't use 10 scriptures to say that. I've got plenty of scriptures to say that, but you need to understand that so that when I read the scripture, you understand it what you read it. That makes sense? All right, let's look at the, the I, I, there are lots of symptoms, but these are the four major ones I thought would be the most useful. But here's the fourth one. Uh, and then let me close with this statement on that last one. You're, uh, be so happy that what someone does or says about you, won't e you won't even notice it. You'd be so focused in on the Word of God that what they do or say, you, you won't even notice it. So, number four, lack of concentration. Lack of concentration. When your mind starts wandering from subject to chub subject like a bird hopping from one branch to the next branch, watch out. That's a clear symptom. See, when you can't stay with your job uh, or sit down in the house and talk with your family, the devil's taking advantage uh, of you and of your life. Uh, you should be capable of thinking about anything as long as you want to think about it and not saying, well, you know, I got ADD, I can't think about it. No, you have authority, and you've got to know you have authority, and you've got to think about 
well, well, you know, I, my attention don't last long. Stop talking yourself into stupid stuff. Yeah. You have a thought. Let, let me show you this. 2 Timothy 1 and 7 says you have been given what kind of a mind? Turn to it. 2 Timothy 1 and 7. You, 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 and, and that's what you tell yourself. When the enemy comes tells you you can't concentrate and you lack concentration, don't let somebody give it a, a technical name or diagnose you a name and then you go around and you accept the name and then you start saying, this is how I am. That's how they did with horoscope. I'm a Scorpio. You ain't no doggone Scorpio. <laughs> I'm an Aquarius. Don't, don't let people do that. Oh, you're an Aquarius. I, I should have known you as an Aquarius. Just <laughs> how you handle that situation, that's what Aquariuses do. They handle it. You don't know me. You better practice that witchcraft somewhere else. It ain't working on me. You don't know me. I'm not an Aquarius. I'm a Christian. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. All right, so check it out. <laughs> you're a Pisces. Pisces and Aquarius, they don't go together good, y'all. Stop all that. Don't buy into that stuff, man. Don't buy into that. Look what he says here. For God has not given us the spirit of fear, right? So listen, what you, uh, God doesn't give you a spirit of fear. If you have ever had fear, it's not coming from God, all right? But what is he giving you? Come on. What is he giving you? And what else? If it's one thing you can be sure about, God has given you a sound mind. If it is not appearing to be sound, resist it. Amen. Resist that thing that tries to contradict what God's given you. You have a sound mind. Have you ever been in a situation where you're like, I can't think of something, I'm forgetting this, and it just automatically comes out of you, I got a sound mind, I got a sound mind, and eventually it, it comes together because you're resisting those temptations to agree well, however your mind might be acting at the time. I have a sound mind. I have a sound mind. I, have a, I, I would put things, I don't know if you've ever done this before, but uh, when I used to wear my glasses all the time, I used to be walking around looking for my glasses. And they were, they were right on my face. Or I was talking on the telephone. <laughs> my wife one time, she just cracked up laughing. And I was talking, she said, what you doing? I said, I'm looking for my phone. She said, well, what you talking on right now? I said, okay, bye. And I, I got a sound mind. I have a sound mind. I have a sound mind. I have a sound mind. You know, uh, my son would, you know, I have to stop him. He's talking about, you getting old. And I'm like, bro, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something right now. That ain't a part of my, ain't nothing rusty. No. And then start calling me rusty. I say, ain't nothing because when I would stand up, my knees make a lot of noise. I said, bro, I said, let me tell you something. You better hope you look like me when you get my age. Boy. That's what you better do. You ought to ask the Lord. What are you talking about? Oh, that ain't no way in our vocabulary. Ain't that right, Pastor Ken? Ain't no old in no cap. We and that, that won't be in our cap. And that won't be in our vocabulary even for the next 30 years. It ain't gonna be in no vocabulary. It ain't happening. It's not gonna happen. We're working on it right now. We're working on being able to come out free of price B87 at 87 and, and, and what's up? What's up? We, I, I, we, I, it's just that ain't gonna happen. Listen, if that happens, we need to just quit. Let, that ain't pleasant to listen to or to look at. Tur turn to your Bible. <laughs> Turn in your Bible. What'd that say? <laughs> I, I ain't doing that. It's just, it's just time to stop. I ain't doing it if I can't still have a pep in my step. And, and, and here's the thing about it. You got you to gotta believe God to start working on that now. You don't wait till you get, or Robert's hope in this, before he went on to be the Lord. He said, you can't wait till you old before you start working on not being old. And if you don't tell people that, they won't, they won't work on it. There are certain things I can't put in my body as I age no more. Re refined sugar is one of them. Can't do it no more. Can't do it. It's like kryptonite, and it, it, it helps in the aging process, and I have to make a choice. And the choice is real simple. That's, I don't want to be a certain way, so I'm going to have to do it. Well, somebody else say, well, I'm going to pray to Jesus and he'll do that. Yeah, and I have known lots of people who are now dead who said that. God will provide wisdom. And you, <laughs> I love y'all so much. Now, the Bible says I'm just, you can pray over it. And it, yes, you can. 
Yes, you can. But that body, according to the word, is, is aging every day. So what are you going to do to stop this natural built-in process? You, go, you can't worry all the time. You can't be depressed all the time. Depression and worry and internalizing all those things. Do you know the very word depression is exactly what's, what's happening internally? Disease is exactly what's happening eternally. Whatever is going on with you emotionally eventually transfers that same distress into a natural physical thing. So you got to learn how to pursue peace. Amen. You're not made to live a, a life full of depression. Right. Amen. Right. Depression and internalized thoughts will set up a foundation for chronic disease, sickness, inflammation, a huge outburst of cortisol and all of this stuff that just makes your life miserable. And all that worry and stressed out that you're doing and, and baby need to pass shoes and you're, or you're I got to go and I got to make this, I got to make this promotion and, and you stand up and, and you, you stay up late all the time and, and you don't think that, that bothers you. You know, staying up late, working all night long, you know that will, that will cause high blood pressure and, 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 and you got all kinds of issues going on with blood flow and, and, and you, you can have a heart attack because you ain't sleeping like you're supposed to sleep. Well, I came here to hear faith. I'm talking to you about faith. Faith in what Jesus has already made available to you. Faith in the provisions he's made available over depression and choosing what he's made available over these other things that show up in your life. You don't have to choose depression. You can choose your authority over depression and use your faith to defeat it and keep it out of your life. Amen. It's your choice. Amen. But I'm happy. I feel good. I'm excited about life. If a thought stays there too long, thank God for Taffy. She said, hey, how long you been thinking about that? I said, I've been thinking about it a little bit. Let it go. Let it go. And we got this little thing we do. She, she, she does this thing like, you know, just out of the blue. She's like, woo! And I'm like, what you doing? She'll do stuff like, we made and it just kind of cracks me up when she does that. So we have ways to kind of jerk you out of it. Because you know you can go home and you can get some bad news or a bad situation and it'll settle in your mind and you won't even know you spending all that time sitting there in a daze thinking about that thing. And you, got, you can't do that. That's why God gave you his word. Amen. Think on his word day and night. Meditate in his word day and night. Replace that thought with something else. Instead of going to bed worrying about this or that or this or that, purposely pick you some scriptures to go to sleep on. Amen. Choose some scriptures to go to bed with Amen. and choose some scriptures to wake up with. Amen. And then you go to bed with him at night and you rise up early in the morning. Yes. That's how you do it day and night. Are you understand the practical approach yeah. to dealing with uh, this? Now, you know, I, my, in my Wednesday night class, I can talk like this. I, you know, I can't do this, son. And people looking, you know, they're like, you know, <laughs> dude, what you talking about? You know, I got to go. I came here to jerk. So I got to I gotta <laughs> give, give a look, put a little sugar on the sermon on Sunday. <laughs> Are y'all following what I'm saying now? All right, so now let, let's, go, let's go to another part of this. Uh, of course, the effects. Those are just the natural ones. But in other words, what depression will actually do Many times depression will steal your ambition. It'll steal your ambition, number one. Number two, it will prevent you from participating in the activities that you should be enjoying, uh, activities that bring joy and strength into your life. Stealing your ambition, preventing you from, from participating in activities that you should be enjoying. Depression is an enemy of your happiness and an enemy of your success. Why, why would the enemy want depression in your life? It is an enemy to your success. Gosh, don't ever forget that. And so every time it comes over, this is an enemy to my success. Depression is an enemy to my success. These thoughts that are weighing heavily upon me and entering into my heart, this is an enemy to my success. And I won't put up 
with enemies to my success. Again, what is success? It's fulfilling, it's discovering and fulfilling the will of God for your life. Success is not the five cars and the, and the four-level house. Success is discovering and fulfilling the will of God for your life. And depression is an enemy to your success. I tell you, that's what gets me stirred up when I find out how Satan is trying to use these tools to stop me from doing what God's called me to do. So it's not just, oh, we came and learned a lesson about depression. We can go and place therapists now. No. I'm trying to get you to understand that you have been designed by God and there has been a call on your life and, and there is a purpose for your life and, and there is something God wants you to do and the grace of God has, 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 has provided finished works and depression and emotional instability is, is trying to stop it all. So you look at people that you know and you look at the issue, and you, you start looking at what I'm teaching you right now, you'll see that 90, over 90% 90 of their issue is they cannot control their emotion. They cannot control what they feel. They don't even know enough. They receive the symptoms. They live with the symptoms. They even go and pay a, a, doc, a, a therapist or a doctor to tell them the name of the symptom, and then they tell everybody what's wrong with them. And what happens to the call of God? What happens to the will of God for their life? What happens to the impact they're supposed to be making and the footprint that God has put in the earth? It's all been put on hold. I'm not going to be depressed. I'm not going to be depressed because I want to see what's at the end of this. I'm not going to be depressed because all of these wonderful, you know, Taffy calls them the God of the surprise. I want to encounter the God of surprise every, every place I go to. And I can't let depression stop me from achieving what God has put before me. So that's why I'm going to fight that good fight of faith against negative emotions that are designed and sent to be an enemy to my success. I mean, tell you, that got me an enemy to my success? Okay, ultimately, yeah, it's the devil, you know, if you want to say that. But I am showing you the everyday devil stuff that's the enemy to your success. It's you not knowing how to deal with how you feel. Yeah, your feelings and how you feel dealing with you, here's a problem. You not knowing how to deal with how you feel. You not resisting something that's trying to steal your sound mind. You submitting to all of the symptoms and, and submitting to the effects of it, you, 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 you got to get over that. So let's look at some, some pretty important things, the effects of depression. Well, physical illness, we've already mentioned that. Physical illness is one effect of depression. You know, being depressed over an extended period of time will cause your organs to function improperly, will close your cells up. So even if you're feeding your body proper nutrition, it won't even get in the cells because the stress. Uh, physical healing, uh, uh, physical illness. Now, I am speaking to you not as somebody who's not encountered depression. My depression was so bad, it was to the point of a gun and ending the whole deal. And it was just a matter of thinking about what I was thinking about. I didn't know that. All I know is I felt bad. And, 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 and when you have the type of depression I dealt with and, and to deal with it chronically, it hurt. It was painful. And, oh, man. So listen to me when I tell you, and, and I, I am qualified to tell you, being free from this thing for so many years. It doesn't mean I go around laughing and smiling all the time, but most of the time I'm having a pretty good time, <laughs> you know? Because I realized that's what he tried to use to get rid of me. In a world full of uncertainty and in the midst of unprecedented global events, the pressures of life can be overwhelming and lead to internal depression. But Christ has called us to overcome and win our internal and external battles. That's why we have designed a series just for you. You don't have to choose depression. You can choose your authority over depression and use your faith to defeat it and keep it out of your life. When you know how to properly divide the word, you know how to properly use the word. During these challenging times, boost your faith and fight the good fight against depression, anxiety, and fear 
with the five message series delivered from depression for just $30. Also available in this one-time offer is the delivered from depression series bundled with the powerful classic book, Winning in Troubled Times. Receive this $50 power pack for just 40 US dollars. Call today or visit the website on the screen to order. Trinidad and Tobago. The 2021 Virtual Change Experience is coming to your home. If you'll just trust him and believe him that then they will adopt your life, there's something I'm supposed to do and I will not miss it this year. Register now by logging on to creflodollarministries.org. Creflo Dollar Global Missions has fed, clothed, housed, and shared the gospel of grace with people on practically every continent. I want to take a moment to encourage you to visit our website and catch up on all the missions work we're doing around the world. You may never visit these places or witness the poverty and levels of human suffering firsthand, but your support, prayers, and selfless giving equipped us to go and to change lives for the better. Thank you for caring enough to proactively take steps to stop misfortune in the lives of others. And thank you. If you want to support our global missions outreach endeavors, consider becoming a partner today by calling in or by visiting us online and signing up. Thank you for partnering with us today. Which holiday was your most memorable one? I think about the first time Creflo and I hosted Thanksgiving dinner at our house and the first time that we had Christmas with our grandkids and just, you know, thanking God for the opportunity to be a part of all the things that God is doing. You know, it's all about family and the extended family, being around your loved ones, your siblings, uh, your grandkids, your children, and appreciating all the things that God has blessed us with. So instead of thinking about what you don't have, just begin to thank God what you do have. Thank Him for all the memories that you have the opportunity to create this day. And so be present in the moment this year may be different than previous years. Safety concerns, financial strains, travel restrictions, all these things we know are a fact. But you know what? It doesn't nullify the fact that God is good and we can still celebrate. And you know what? It challenges us to be creative. So prepare, you know, whatever meal that you have and just make the most of the time. It could be a great opportunity to start a new holiday tradition. So just thank God for what you have and then we'll begin to see him multiply and add to it because he is such a good God. Enjoy your time together and God bless you. Thank you, partners and friends. Your love and financial support makes it possible to bring this message into millions of homes all across the globe. 